Hey guys, hey. So today technically is post op day three. Um, lap band removal surgery. Um, I'm really groggy and just I'm in a lot of pain uh, because I can't sit still. <laughs> like that's that is my entire issue is that I have a super hard time just sitting still um, now that I'm constantly on the go. So my throat is still rather sore. I'm drinking some delicious ass coffee to try to ease my throat. So I thought what I would kind of come on here for would be lots of people ask, you know, what's having laparoscopic surgery like? Like, what can they expect? And I thought that this would be a really easy way for me to explain it since I just had it. So typically, I mean, I've had uh, the little the little clamps and the little... Um, the little scissors and everything that they use that they actually put in with the big long poles. I've had up to six. There there could be more. It just depends on how much they need to do. And if you've ever looked up laparoscopic surgery, like it's it's really interesting. At least to me, I think it's interesting. Um, they blow your stomach up or whatever area they're working on up with gas so they have more room to maneuver in it. Um, they also have camera down there and they have like these little, little alligator kind of clips. You know, you ever had the alligator clips for your hair? They look like little alligator clips. They have, um, like I said, a camera, one that shoots water so that they can see like, you know, it, it squirts water. They have one for suction. So they have all kinds of different instruments like actually inside you. Um, in order to help you get what, what needs to be done. And I just think it's it's absolutely fascinating. So for, um, sorry, the medicine I take makes me itch. So what can you expect um, after having laparoscopic surgery? The, the biggest thing for me is the throat pain. Um, I think I was telling you guys about that last time, is that my throat is always super sore because they're always scratching my, um, my throat when they're in there working. So when you're having um, stomach, like if they're removing something or if they are putting something in there or they're doing the sleeve or they're doing the bypass or the, the DS, they're going to have a camera as well as um, something for water and something for suction. And uh, I mean, there's a ton of crap that they have to have in there. So... Um, that's always the first thing that I remember coming out of surgery is the fact that my throat is absolutely on fire and that they won't give me enough ice chips. So to combat that, I always bring chloroseptic spray because it's sugar-free. It doesn't hurt my, pa it's never hurt my stomach. Um, it's never bothered me. And if you don't want to swallow it, you don't have to. You just kind of gargle it in the back and just spit it out. Um, I've done that many, many times, but this is a real lifesaver, especially because I use this when I wake up in the morning because my throat's all dried out and like a lot of pain. I'll use that. Um, chapstick. Also, they usually give you a chapstick depending on what sur what place you're at, but like chapstick is also a really good, awesome friend of yours. And then, of course, um, I like these. Now, I've shown you guys this stuff before, but... I'm making this video so people who just want to look at this can see. I like the sugar-free kind, the lemon mint. Um, that's my absolute favorite. Um, it doesn't hurt my... Th it makes my throat feel really well. So, um, another thing, you know, my friend Amber just had surgery like three weeks ago. And, you know, she comes to me with all these questions. And I'm like, well, maybe making this video will make it a little easier for people to understand what it's kind of like. Because, you know, you're changing everything. Well, I'm going to say for sur for weight loss surgery you're pretty much changing your diet you're having to change how much you're able to eat and like people are not prepared you're not prepared you think you're prepared until it happens and then you're not prepared for how much you can get in um 
you have to be willing to compromise with yourself. And that's what I think is the hardest part is that you're like, well, I don't like this food or I don't want to eat that. Or in the past that has made me sick. Well, now you have a brand new stomach and you have to be willing to try new foods or you're going to starve to death. Like you can't just, you can't be stubborn because you never know if your pouch or sleeve will like something later on. Like, um, tuna fish. I used to love tuna fish. Like I would, I would fuck up some tuna fish, but now that I've had surgery, well, surgeries, my pouch does not like the taste of it. It doesn't like, it doesn't like it in there. So I can't eat tuna fish anymore, but I ate a lot more avocado and I didn't particularly care for avocado before. So, I mean, there's all kinds of things that, that change. Like with this one, um, that I just had, my taste buds are a little funky right now because I can't find anything texturally that I can stand eating. Like I made some oatmeal, um, like when my husband came home and I just can't eat it. Like I just, I'm having a really, really rough time finding something that, that I want to eat besides, um, protein shakes. So that's what I've kind of been living off of is like, you know, two or three protein shakes a day. And then my husband gets me a Starbucks because he loves me. So, um, and that takes me a good long while to, to drink this and, the medicine makes me so itchy. I'm sorry, guys. Um, another thing, you know, depending on your surgeon and, and your medical team, like I have um, glue, like, you know, holding mine together. And I can show you guys again. So if you're not really interested in looking at somebody's big old belly, then I suggest you turn the, the camera off. Not camera, but... So... Uh, you guys can see all that so yeah there's there's all my incisions right there this one is still by far the worst and this one but they're itching so that means that they're healing um I went out today for a few minutes with my husband and somebody asked me if I was pregnant and it made me look kind of sad but I was like no I'm just fat girl um I also walk like really really slowly uh right now so that's another another thing. I hope this video is making some damn sense because like I feel like I'm everywhere. Um another thing that you know you might not be comfortable sitting or laying down. Um a recliner, lots of pillows behind you, whatever you need because when your stomach is being worked on and you've had laparoscopic surgery or even open surgery, those muscles are still trying to heal themselves and still knitting themselves together. So for me, laying down flat is not happening. Um, I don't have a recliner, so I have a ridiculous amount of pillows. I don't know if you guys can see. Like I have a ridiculous amount of pillows over here that I lay on just to be more comfortable um so like the most important thing after having any kind of surgery is that you have to be hydrated because you will end up back in the hospital and I've been in the hospital so many damn times for dehydration it's not funny I can't breathe ugh Uh, you may be let out the first day. Like I was, I was, I was the next, I was out the same day is what I'm trying to say. And then, um, yeah, I was out on the very first day right after my surgery a couple hours later. So another thing that might be really helpful is that, um, don't be afraid to ask for pain medicine. You know, while you're in the hospital, if you're being discharged or anything like that, you have to be your own advocate. You have to, if, if you're lucid enough, you have to be like, no, this hurts. I don't want to be, you know, because they ask you on a scale to one to ten, what's your pain level? And if it, for me, anything over a five is unbearable. I can't, I can't even, I can't deal so anything over a five is definitely really painful and I hate it. So I always tell them if you can get me down to a five or below, you know, I can, I can pretty much just go home. Um, oh yeah, I was telling you about the incisions with glue. So some people suture them together. Some people use the Dermabond, which is what I have, the, the glue. They pull your skin together and then they, they put a, a strip of glue on there. 
Um, I've never had the sutured kind. I've never been stapled. Um, even with my panaculectomy, he used glue. So I don't really know um, what it's like to have the staples and stuff in, but I'm, I've seen other people who, who have. Um, you need to stay on top of your medications. That's that's another big one. Um, if your medication says every three to four hours and you're also taking like Tylenol or ibuprofen or whatever you're taking, kind of switch back and forth on those. And that way you're always constantly having something in your system so you never quite run out. Um, you know, like I'll take the, the Roxycodone and then, you know, I think like three hours later, I'll take Tylenol. And then, you know, three hours into taking that one, I'll take more rocks. See, so I'm, I'm spacing everything out. I think that's what I'm trying to say. I'm spacing everything out, except that it, they're overlapping each other. So I never really run out of medication, um, pain medication in my body. Um, if for some reason, and this might be TMI, if for some reason you can't go to the bathroom, um, after like two days, that's an issue and you're not going to want to strain. So what I immediately started doing, because I know pain meds block me up, is I started taking um, a dose of Miralax in everything I was drinking. Um, so my apple juice, my coffee, my water, like everything has had, like even my coffee this morning has Miralax in it. Because number one, you're not really eating enough to to have a full bowel movement, depending on what you had done. But also with saying that you don't want to wait a week of not going to the bathroom and then, you know, having to strain and hurt yourself trying to get it out. So Miralax is my best friend. Uh, people constantly come to me with like, well, Benefiber is but so I go to a specialist um, because I have IBS with constipation and he tells me that Benefiber um, can be more detrimental than helpful for people who have chronic um, uh, irritable bowel syndrome. Um, so I was taking Benefiber in the morning and I was taking my Miralax at night and the Benefiber was making it too hard so I wasn't able to, to go to the bathroom correctly where if I just take the Miralax before bed, like in the morning, I'm good to go. Or I could, sometimes I take two things of Miralax just because I know um, I'm going to eat cheese that day or I'm going to eat something fibrous that day. And I know that my body, I know my body well enough to know that I need something a little extra. Uh, and the reason I like Miralax the most is because Miralax is a non-stimulant. So it's not like you have these horrific cramps and you're going to die. Like if you took X-Lax or something like that, or even the Sena. Um, and it's completely safe for you. Uh, I feel like I'm a commercial sponsored. I wish. Get on that Miralax. Um, excuse me. So with Miralax, there's no taste, there's no texture, and then there's no... Um, no taste, no texture, and it dissolves completely in hot or cold. Um, I've even had put it in something and had to microwave it later, and it was just fine. So um, it is one of the best things I've ever had in my life. And like I said, I go to a specialist, and he was just telling me, you know, I can have up to like six doses a day if it got that bad. But he gives it to his cancer patients and kidney transplant patients. He's like the pregnancy people. It's Miralax. Um, is is a phenomenal thing and what it does is it uses the water already in your body to go ahead and help you flush everything out so it makes everything a lot softer i didn't mean for this one to turn into a big old poop uh talk but i think that's also something people need to know but you need to stay on your medicine you need to not be afraid to ask for more pain medication you need to be um your own advocate because if you're in the hospital and no one else is around and you're in pain that's your fault because you're not you're not advocating you're not telling people hey uh, i need this fixed and i've been on both sides of the of the coin like that um you you have to get in water i i'm not even joking with you like you need to be sipping something all day, every day. Like, every every moment you're awake, you really need to be grabbing for your water bottle and just taking a little sip. Like, I'm almost done with this one. So, I mean, all night long, I'm constantly having, you know, just a little bit um, of something, you know, to, to drink. So, staying hydrated, making sure that you're eating 
at least a little bit in the first couple of days because, you know, you have to have pudding or, you know, just a little something, something like a little bit of broth or, you know, you need to have something to help enter, you know, keep your energy up because that's, that's another, excuse me, another big thing is that your energy, you won't have any if you're not taking your vitamins and you're not eating and you're not drinking, like you're, you're not going to get better faster. So, um, gene pro is awesome. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I don't believe that gene pro is 30 grams of protein per teaspoon. Like it, I sent it to my doctor and like we've sat and talked about it. He said, you'd be lucky to get like 15 out of each teaspoon. So I'll take it. I count it as 15. Um, I don't need any, like, haters, like, coming to me be like, oh, Gene Pro. Look, I still use it. I still like it. But 30 grams of protein is just a little a little out there. So I'm not even going to go there. Um, I count it as 15 grams of protein. So, you know, I put it in my coffee. You need the extra protein to heal. So, you know, as much protein as you can feasibly get in, um, which is with my liquids right now because food is just not, not doing it for me. Um, that's, that's what I do. So I throw the gene pro in, in my coffee and then I get 15 grams of protein in my coffee or an extra 15 in my yogurt. Like I, I eat yogurt too. So you just got to find, it's a trial and error situation of like what it's going to be like. Um, I don't have any oozing. I get some general bruising. If, uh, I bruise a lot more if he gives me the Lovenox, which are the shots that you put in your stomach, um, after, major surgery a lot of times they do that but they didn't on this one because it wasn't a major surgery um probably with my distal I'll have Lovenox shots because I believe I have to stay in the hospital for almost a week for him to monitor me and make sure everything's okay so um all right I think I think I pretty much covered you know um what it's like to have um have that. I would bring some lotion, um, some dry shampoo. If you're staying in the hospital more than one day, some dry shampoo, some lotion. Um, I would bring chapstick, chloroseptic, throat lozenges, uh, a pair of slippers because they give you those god-awful socks. I hate those socks. And maybe a robe for yourself, um, just something you could throw on the back so when you're walking up and down the hall and not everybody to see your wazoo. Um, but I think that's about it. And then, you know... If you guys have any questions, uh, leave them down below. If you want me to, if you want me to answer something, uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, go ahead and just click the little linky dinky thing down here that says subscribe because I make videos a couple times a week, and I'm always pretty pretty consistent with what I'm doing. And you know, I love to help people, so don't forget that you can subscribe for more of my craziness and. I love your beautiful, gorgeous, amazing faces. I'm going to lay back down. Mwah. Bye.